Javascriptmasters.org live coding session where we'll be working on a music app with JavaScript and CSS. Code Buddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. Getting my project opened up real quick and then we'll pivot over there. And I need to close out a couple of other tabs, but in any case, go live and pivot over. We we're just working on a <laughs> Quaker CMS project. I'm not very fast at pivoting. And let me get the GitHub link up here. I'll get more organized as I get familiar with um, these projects that we're developing. I can set up you know specific uh, profiles for them. Make sure I get that. And if I can nudge it over to the right, so if you're following along at home, this code is on GitHub, so feel free to check it out. Open bug reports, feature requests, pull requests would be great too. We're open to those. I'm going to re uh, sort of rename the project soon, uh, perhaps. Uh, Tonnets is an all right name, but uh, we're clearly not building a Tonnets here, so um, I think the name should kind of reflect the goals of the project, which may include uh, a Tonnets diagram. Excellent. I think we're back and rolling. Level two is back. Excellent. It says zero viewers, but then there's level two. We can put as many bulbs on that. Oh yeah, definitely. So let's take a listen. Okay, there goes. Did it. <laughs> Job done. Mission accomplished. Now, there was a bug here, and Quantum was helping me f figure out how to fix this bug. When I deploy this, um, browsers are more strict when they access uh, content online. They, you need to set up an uh, audio context, uh, and my local development environment doesn't have that restriction. Uh, so the thing just works right off the bat. So this is something we'll need to do anyway when we start deploying. Um, I'm just trying to think here. De deploying this project, because it seems like it's worked before. It seems like you, I've deployed it and it's just worked and I didn't have to set up an audio context. Uh, the only major change I, well, not the only one, but the major change I did to the HTML is factored out the JavaScript into its own file and added this select box, which checks this out. Nice, sine wave. Uh, right now I'm serving it from a local development server. Um, this uh, VS Code plugin, just you click go live and it creates uh, an internal, probably Node.js server or something. But I've also deployed it on um, GitHub pages. So that's uh, at git, uh, Riley, uh, github io slash tonnets. And this one's not working, the deployed version. I'll just send you the link here real quick in the chat. Because if we look underneath the thing and I hope uh, Quantum comes back because they, they, they explained how it works. They um, left a link to their code repository so I can check it out there. The audio context was not allowed to start. It must be resumed or created after a user gesture on the page. So you can't just like start uh, start the page with this interactive audio experience. Unfortunately, I believe we have to figure out how to how to get the user to make an initial in, uh, gesture and then make a musical gesture. So the initial gesture is different from the musical gesture. It's to initialize the audio context. So we have to make that obvious. So let me hop over in GitHub to look at GitHub. Let's copy this link from the chat. Look at Quantum's brilliant JavaScript P 
Piano, super simple synthesizer in JavaScript using the Web Audio API. Really cool. Nice. To Samuel. Samuel, I'll just say Samuel. Ah, uh, can you hear? You can't hear my desktop audio, can you? Darn it. You missed it. The beautiful brilliance of the Tannenbaum. I'll switch it over. I don't want to wear headphones. And I need to adjust the volume. So apologize for your ears. I apologize for that. I want the volume to be approximately the same level as my voice. That's not too bad, is it? Is that too noisy? Okay, good. Yeah, did I blow out your speakers? Sorry about that. Okay, good. And uh, here is, oh, oh, yeah, of course you can hear the music through my microphone. Nice. So are you getting echo, by the way? I haven't actually, if you're getting echo, I'll put on headphones. No, no echo. All right. Sounds good to me. So let's go back here and look at this code and what it boils down to is this this event listener when the window something happens on the window like a mouse down event it's going to look for this and bind the sound to it So I'm thinking this has got to be resolved at the library level. I'm just going to put it in there for now and, and uh, see how it works. That's a clean suggestion. Level two learn says, why not place an interval? And then once it's ready, we set the context and cancel the interval. Hmm. That's a good, good idea. Let me think about that for just a second. Let me adjust my seat. Okay, and I got about probably 15 more minutes and then I'll take a break and eat some dinner. I have another meeting at eight o'clock. I don't want to be late for it. So yeah, and the interval approach does sound nice. Um, sounds like it's a little bit of moving parts. I think if I just have one event listener, and I just say, click this button. Just for now, they're not a permanent solution. Okay. HowlerJS has implemented this solution. That's quite a solution. Let's, let's take a look at how large I'm just curious now. Oh, I think this one's more geared towards like playing audio, not like the tones and synthesis. Yeah, you play waveforms and things. Radio and spatial and audio sprites. Which might be cool if we had like a, a mixer or something to this project where you could up, you know, you could use your own little waveforms and sequence them or something. But yeah, so it's like WebM, MT, MP3. I'm just gonna follow this thread a little bit to see how it resolved. 
confirming that the solution to this issue is to call to, upon first user interaction in the app just before starting any sounds. Okay, so let's think, what would be the first user interaction? If we're good at the JavaScript. Yeah, click a button. Yeah, that's a good idea. Hey, what's up, Quantum? We pivoted over to the music app. John uh, had to leave to go. He's traveling back to their home, and uh, he and I want to work more closely on that CMS project. All right. So, yeah, Quantum, thanks for sharing your code. Quantum had an impromptu visitor, and I did check it out. Uh, I'm not sure if this uh, approach is necessarily exactly what we want, and I think there's something a little bit higher level at the at the library level that we can implement. And uh, level two learn, I think, is zeroed in on it that we just need to one user interaction, and we'll run one line of code in that initial user interaction. And Quantum, you mentioned earlier toggling a CSS um, class, uh, so all this coming together might be the first thing a user sees in the app is like sort of a power button or some kind of icon to click, click me button or whatever. And then toggle the visibility of those two, the button to be invisible and the everything else to be visible. What do you think, what do you think? Does that sound cool? Let's try it out. See if we can do it in about 15 minutes. What you can also do is depending on how you're handling the other clicks, let me just hop over to the HTML while you're doing that and start fleshing out the idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll put everything inside the music you are. Initialize the context on the first meaningful click before running the actual sound or playing sound playing logic. Yeah, so the first meaningful click is happening in two places. Uh, I have a query selector for note and a query selector for chords. And the uh, person can either click a note or a chord. I gotta sort of optimize this code, get a little disentangled. Uh, I don't need to really treat notes and chords separately. If I just encode the note data, it'll, in the SVG, it'll just know to play whatever it is, play music, play sounds. Before the, let's, uh, yeah, that sounds good. So the first meaningful click would be here, um, inside the play note event, because that is responding to the click. Oh my goodness. Load, mouse up, uh, mouse down, sorry. Now, did you say that the first click would not sound or, oh, well, let's just try it actually. Oops. How do we try it though? Commit and push, I suppose. So we'll just, since we were only playing notes in this particular example, we'll put it here. And hopefully I will refactor the code so that there's only one place for this uh, event to occur. Save, what's up with my master? I don't think I've committed directly to master. Nothing, nothing's wrong. I guess I'm getting a little bit tired towards the end of the day. Just for testing purpose, just call the function in the console. Oh yeah, of course, good point. Yes. 
Uh, where are we? So, <laughs> yes, I'm totally getting tired. For just for testing purposes, we'll call it right here. Promise, pending. Ooh, it didn't work. Resolved. So that might work. It's kind of subtle. I didn't notice it at first. If you use the event delegation for all events, you could actually prevent duplicating any code. Quantum, that sounds pretty advanced. I don't want to use it. Um, well, what if we do this? I like copy and pasting things. Oh, I guess it's not working. <laughs> Really not that advanced. It sounds fancy, but it's not. It's actually less code. Okay, um, we can go through it. Maybe we could do. Uh, maybe we could do a pull request or something. I'm gonna pivot this project. I mentioned this earlier um, to a more generic repository and a little bit reboot it. I have just a really. I think it's a really good idea, and I want to. Of the direction I want to take this. Um, so people can kind of collaborate and share these musical interfaces and it's really easy to design your own via an SVG editor and then share that with other people. Um, so that will need a server component. In any case, without, uh, I don't have it fully fledged, but I think this is the direction I'd like to take it. Uh, we just need a new project. I'll pick a stronger copyleft license, particularly one that um, protects the server side code. Uh, and now that we've sort of worked it through this experimental code, what I'm seeing in my mind's eye is kind of a canvas area where people can create experimental musical interfaces, a circle of keys or a Christmas tree, and then a control uh, surface where, I'm sorry, I'm pointing with my finger, but so the canvas is where you have these, any arbitrary musical instrument, uh, and particularly that can run on touch, multi-touch uh, enabled devices, and the control surface would be things like choosing a synthesizer or adding effects and modulating those, uh, sliding them up and down, things like that. And then the platform will allow you to upload your own sort of SVGs and share them with other people. Event delegation, okay, would actually help dynamically adding reactive elements. Ooh, I like that. Uh, level two learn reminds me that debugger is your friend. All right. Uh, where should I be using debugger? Inside of this here? I mean, it looks like the unmute thing did work. Um, I'm not sure how this library works. So, yeah, that's sort of like my little <laughs> epiphany I had today. I'm like, what should we be doing with this project? What is the point? Mm. Well, this was promising, but it just didn't work.
allow pause on error. If there's a button to click on the debugger uh, that allows us. Oh, okay, got it. So should I put the debugger before or after this? Right there, basically. And somehow I think we're just going to use this, but it seems like this is a nice module. So I'll refresh the page. So pause the debugger. And then I'll just step over the next function. Uncaught type error. This dot context advent listener is not a function. Well, I'm not using it. Yes, six. I just have included the HTML, and besides, it's it's correctly rendering the button. It's not finding the context. Doesn't the error tell you the line? Well, audio context JS line thirty eight. This context add event listener. State change E. Yeah, I'm pretty deep inside of this library. Click on the line number. This is the line number. Can you see the code? Oh, is my video obscuring it? Let me, I'm just going to, I guess, disable my video. It's not super important that you see that I'm here on the thing. <laughs> Click on the line number next to the line. Oh, I understand what you're saying. So like, set a breakpoint like this or something. Right there, line 38. Yep, seems like Tonnitz's context is not initialized on that at that point. Ah, so if I actually then move the unmute button down by Tonnitz, do you mean the polysynth, the tone JS polysynth, do you suppose? Or the Tonnitz SVG? Uh, level two, I'm not sure exactly at what point you're responding to. I'll save it. <laughs> yes, to both the tone library. Sorry. Yeah, okay, cool. I think we're on the same page. Let's try it. And, ah, uh, okay. Well, this is an improvement. So, yes, you have to put the unmute button after creating the polysynth. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What's going on? Okay, now my. And then we're stopped on this line, so I think we're good to go there. Uh, no, no. I should have studied the line. Well, there's four lines. At what point in the stack do you think I should go? The audio context 38 or a little higher in the unmute? JS, don't go too deep. All right, so let's start, let's start right next to it. So we know line three is, we know what's going on there. Unmute, so unmute button returns a new unmute. All right, so it's trying to instantiate the unmute, which is looking for a, a new context, this context. And it, then try to add event listener. So context, and this is why you told me to put a breakpoint there so we can see what context is. Yeah, this is the issue. It failed to initialize the context because there was no user interaction. Ah, so we're right back where we started. And that's what this plugin is supposed to resolve. You need to call unmute button in an event listener. Use a button to click. <laughs> yeah, level two, thank you for doing that. Uh, mention that again. All right. 
so. This was going to give us a button to click, though. Input type button. I'm going to copy and paste your code, uh, level two. Wait, hold on. Level two says Google it. Well, yeah, you can do input type button or button. Quantum. Ooh, ooh, look at this. But it's got a button. I don't understand. This is the little button in the upper right corner, the little dilly, dilly bob there. That is supposed to do it. <clears throat> nah, no worries. So yeah, we've got the unmute button in the page context and I will just put the button right under Huva Iolua. And refresh. Huva Iolua. Uh, we don't need, and why is it? Ooh, this is weird. I think we're getting all mixed up with this. Um, all right, level twos. Saying that won't work, you're just calling it manually. That you need to, uh, quantum says you're just calling it manually. I think this unmute button library is maybe confusing the point. Let me just mute this. Let me just remove that. And we'll make a our own function. called Enable Audio. Uh. Quantum says it should have been fine. Uh, the way it was written, it should have been fine. Right here, the unmute button. You just need to call the unmute button in your Tonus.js script. Right, and so we're back to this. Inside you said of a, an event listener, right? So inside this. Play note listener? No, all right. I did call it inside the Tonus.js, but at what point? It's already inside an event listener on the button. Yes. You just don't need to call it at all. Well, I'm not just going to copy and paste that. I'm reading that. That's quite confusing. This is the weird thing. They're just um, not even concerned about that. They're just, oh, you know what? Might be different here. That's the import order. Actually, this might need to be imported after, I mean before. Unmute comes before tone. Huh. 
can't be that easy, is it? Let's see. Let me just clean up. Keep the lib, keep the button, remove all references to the unmute button in Tonus JS. This worked. So yeah, let me clean up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, let me commit and push this. Uh, who wants to try, who wants to test it? I will clean up the code, commit and push. So let's just say fix audio deployment, something like that. All right, one moment. I'm going to push that over to GitHub Pages. Okay, the, the uh, library should be now deployed. Level two says, are you enjoying the holidays? Any, do I plan to visit family? Um, yeah, I might visit family in the summer because uh, my family's in the United States and uh, it's a really big trip. It takes a while. I'll just pop on my video since we're having a quick debrief. Uh, where is that? Yeah, so thanks for asking level two. Um, yeah, it's quite a big trip and we're already, we already have a little bit of summer plans um, to attend this Quaker conference called Pacific Yearly Meeting. So yeah, this winter I'll just be spending time with my son and uh, maybe making a little bit of Christmas music. Uh, I think he would like these kind of tools. This is pretty fun. He's playing, he's learning to play uh, piano. And let's see, what do we have? GitHub.io slash tonnets. Oh, wait, that's just a my debugger. Let me just close this out altogether. And then you unmute it. Does it work for either of you? Man. <laughs> yeah, so I'm in, I, I'm in Finland, you asked. Not working, I get no error. Oh boy, man. Well, I really, I have to run because this next meeting's in 10 minutes and I need a little bit of a break in between this. I really appreciate level two and quantum, the help uh, and guidance you've been given on this project and the inspiration for trying new things. And um, yeah, I think maybe we'll get this to work in a little bit. Uh, I'll try to probably stream next Tuesday. John and I will be, I think, streaming next Saturday. And my brother Mike and I might be hidden, hanging out on Sunday. But I'll try to stream about three times this week. If you'll notice below the stream, I set up a calendar. I'll try to commit to those times so I'm a little more consistent and um, people can anticipate when this live coding will be online. But if you guys have, if you all have a little bit of time, maybe uh, clone this repository, see if it works locally. It should work locally, and I don't know why it's not working on the GitHub deployment. It's a little disheartening, but we'll figure it out. We'll get it worked out. So once again, this has been a Code Buddies Jam live coding session. 
check out uh, the community code buddies.org. There's a lot of people there um, help you learn and new skills. You can also help other people along their learning journey. And there's several opportunities right now on Code Buddies to contribute to um, new fledgling open source projects, including this Tonnets library. As you can see, this is pretty fledgling. So yeah, I hope to see everybody around the Code Buddies community. Thanks for, again for watching the stream, hanging out on the live stream today, and have a great